everyone. Welcome to Cooking with the Keefs. It's not really all the Keefs, just me today and my Galentine. This is Carrie, and Carrie and I have been friends for... We just figured it out. We did the math. Uh, 30 years uh, this year. Yeah. This year. Yeah. So she predates the Keefs. I, she... I'm before the I'm before the Keefs. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, and Karen and I have worked together. We've danced together. We've, you know, we've just been um, lifelong friends. And so who better to celebrate Galentine's Day with um, than one of your best friends? Yep. So we're going to do a couple of things today. We're going to kind of mix it up. We're going to be baking as usual, making a red velvet cookie cake. And we have Carrie here, who is our expert. Yes. So we're also going to do uh, a tablescape for your Valentine's or your Galentine's Day party. Um, and we'll show you how just to kind of make that cute with some of the items that you have around the house or maybe something you got at the grocery store as well. Yeah, I love, same thing with my baking, I love being able to pull things together inexpensively, quickly, just on a dime, mm -hmm. and some of these things are things like she said, you're just going to already have around your house, you can go to Dollar Tree, yep. which I love, yep. um, and so I think we'll get started. Alright, let's do um, it. So, like I said, we're going to be doing a red velvet cookie cake, and those were huge in the 90s and everything the 90s is back again and is new again so <laughs> you just you just dated our friendship yeah a little bit, little bit. <laughs> dated ourselves a little bit um so right now we're going to pull together our dry ingredients and i'm going to start by showing you how to measure your flour which i always kind of fluff up my flour i keep this scoop in with my flour and you want to overfill your measuring cup and sweep it off this is so that you don't pack down the flour and, oh, and overdo it. You don't want more flour than you need because it's going to really affect your recipes. So you need two cups of flour. And then we're going to add two tablespoons of cocoa powder. And red velvet does have some cocoa, but it's not chocolate. It's just a faint hint. We're going to then add in cornstarch. And cornstarch is important in this recipe because this is what is going to give us a chewy cookie. The cornstarch, you can add cornstarch into any cookie recipe if you want to make it chewy and softer. Um, it also limits its spreading, so you get like a really nice thick cookie. The cornstarch kind of messes with the proteins in your flour and allows it to um, develop less gluten. So that's where, why you get a nice chewy cookie. And then we're going to add in half a teaspoon of baking soda and half a teaspoon salt. I use kosher salt in all my baking. And then Carrie, do you want to go ahead and I stir that up? Yes. So you want to take this opportunity to really break up any lumps in your flour and your cocoa powder. You can't over mix at this point. So you're going to see in a lot of your recipes, it's going to ask you to mix your dry ingredients before you're wet so that you don't over mix later on when you're adding the dry to your wet ingredients. So this is nice and mixed. Nice and mixed. And we're going to kind of just put this aside for a second and forget about that. In this bowl, I have our butter, which is three quarters of a cup softened butter. So you want to be able to squish it with your hands, but you don't want it to be melted. Then you're going to add in a half cup of packed brown sugar and three quarters of a cup granulated sugar. The brown sugar is also really important in this recipe because it has extra moisture in it. So it's going to also help our, our cookie be really chewy. And I'm going to show you a trick with creaming your butter and your sugars. Most recipes start this way and I feel like a lot of people under mix their butter and sugar. So you really want to get that going. And I'm going to show you at what point most people start creaming their butter and sugar. And then we're going to take it a little bit longer so that it is fully incorporated and creamed. While you're doing this, the butter and the sugar, the sugar is poking little holes in your butter it's going to incorporate air, it's going to start to dissolve the sugar, and better incorporate into your recipe. So it's really important. And I apologize for the noise, but we're gonna just really let that go. And most people will stop right here when they see the butter and the sugar coming together. 
in kind of a ball. But you want to keep going. You want it to start to stick again to the sides of your bowl. So as it keeps going, you're going to see it comes away from the bowl and then starts to restick and get really sticky, which is when you want to stop. So that's a good visual cue. Because I know sometimes in recipes it just says cream your butter. You know, what does that mean? So I'm going to keep that going. And it's starting to stick again to the side of the bowl, as you can see. So we're going to stop it there. And one thing that I did do, just so you can see, I saved the wrapper of my butter. And this serves a couple of purposes. I use it to put my spoon down in between. And I also use it later on when I press my dough into the cake. So always save that and put that aside. We're gonna clean off the sides. And then, and Carrie is a big baker too. Carrie loves to bake, so that's one thing we text and yes, message about. Carrie made an amazing cheesecake for Christmas. Yes, I made a baklava cheesecake. And it looked amazing. All right, so next we're gonna do uh, our eggs. So in this recipe, we're using one whole egg and one egg yolk. The egg yolk also is something else that will help make the cookie really chewy. The proteins and the fats in the yolk also help interrupt that protein and that gluten forming and it makes it so that things get nice and soft and chewy. Uh, we're also going to add in two teaspoons of red food coloring. This is just, you know, in the baking aisle at your store. And this is what's going to give us our red velvet color. And we're going to do two teaspoons of vanilla. Ooh. And it's okay if you go a little heavy on the vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever complained about that. And then start it really slow. You don't want a face full of red food dye. That would stink. And slowly increase the speed of your mixer. And we're going to make sure this is fully incorporated. You want to make sure you don't see any chunks of the butter sugar mixture. You want everything really nice and mixed. And it's going to get really neon. But don't worry, it's going to become more of a normal red velvet color once we add our flour and cocoa mixture. And I'm just going to go in there, clean off the beater to make sure we get everything in there. Scrape down the sides. On a stand mixer, if you have one, you tend to realize that things start to collect at the bottom when you're mixing. So you always wanna go in there and clean things off and scrape as you go so that everything really gets incorporated evenly. That's super important. All right. So now that that's that, I'm gonna keep this on its lowest setting and we're gonna go ahead and add our flour in again just a little bit at a time. Slowly incorporate that. This way you don't get a face full of flour. All right. All right. And then once that starts to incorporate, you can turn it up a little bit. We're gonna grab our chocolate chips. Other things you can do other than right here, I have semi-sweet chocolate chips. You can also use vanilla chips, which the white chips look really nice studded in the red dough. You could use dark chocolate, which is probably what I would do. And you don't want to over mix this, but you're going to come in again, clean off the beater, and make sure that's all nice and incorporated clean the bottom. You can do this with a hand mixer too. I just happen to like using a stand mixer, but you use what you have at home. And we're gonna go ahead and throw in our chocolate chips. That's one cup of semi-sweet. But like I said, you use what you like and what your family likes. And that's it. Really quick came together really easily. 
and then we're gonna just dump this in our prepared pan. So as Carrie brought over, I have a spring form pan. And just to show you what that is, if you've never seen one, there's like a latch on the side here. So you can unlatch it and it comes apart. Makes it really, really easy when you have something like a cheesecake or a cookie cake or any kind of cake really that you want to easily unmold and have nice clean edges and you don't want to have to worry about turning on a pan. So this is actually a pan that I would recommend to everybody to have if you don't already have one. Um, super cheap on Amazon. And I used my baking spray, which has flour in it. It's just extra insurance so things don't stick. Um, I've talked about that on the show before. And I've this is Baker's Joy, which has been around forever. You can also get generic brands from Stop and Shop and Market Basket. So it's really inexpensive. And if you do any baking, it's a great tool to have. So I'm just making sure I have all the dough. It's a really sticky batter, which is why we went ahead and saved our, awesome, thank you, saved our butter wrapper, because it's gonna help us press this really sticky dough into our pan. And this will take, so this is a nine inch pan you can use a 10 inch spring form pan too. If you use a 10 inch pan, it'll uh, cook a little bit faster. So this will take about 35 to 45 minutes. If you use a, a bigger pan, it'll take a little less time. And you can also use a pie dish. So if you have like a normal nine inch pie dish, you would just serve it in the pie dish instead of unmolding it. And here is our butter wrapper. And we're gonna just go ahead and press that in the pan. And you wanna get it as even as you can so that it bakes evenly and you don't have a warped, half raw, half cooked cookie. And this will bake up nice and thick and chewy because of all those ingredients that we used. And the heat from your hand will kind of melt that butter that's left on the wrapper. And it'll help give you a nice, smooth top and I could probably get really crazy with trying to even this out but here we go and now we're just gonna go in the oven looks great yeah right uh, you also want to make sure you're putting your things on a middle rack in the oven so things bake evenly and the air and the hot air can get all around your baked goods and bake nice and even so now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to do our tablescape. Make everything beautiful. Awesome, you ready? Yes, I am ready. Okay, so uh, we know that most Galentine parties, sometimes they're mostly brunches, I would say. I agree. Um, so we're gonna show you how to make a tablescape, which are things that are just around your house. Um, one thing for sure that makes it a little bit more romantic or fun with your girlfriends is um, <laughs> candles, right? Yeah. Uh, so we know that taper candles, they're making a huge comeback. You see them at weddings, you see them in the dining room, and I'm sorry I'm coming out of the angle yeah. a little bit, but I'm going to hand them down to Jen. Grab these. And so what I did is I went to the dollar store, but you can, if you have these holders in your house, then those will work well as, to, uh, as well. Um, so I got four holders at the dollar store, and then I got ta uh, tapered candles in two different sizes, two different textures, in two different colors. When you are designing for a space, for an entertainment space, what you want to do is you want to follow a couple of rules. One of those rules are what we call coordinating colors, right? Mm -hmm. So when we start to pick our design or our theme for our tablescape, we want to stay within the same color family. So that means if you have a red candle in that same color family would be pink, yep. uh, purple, um, and then everything that coordinates in between that. Um, contrasting colors would be orange and yellow. Yep. Um, so you want to stay away from those because those are less aesthetically pleasing if they don't coordinate or match. Um, playing with textures is a really good fun way to kind of fill in your space. Um, so starting with the candles, what we're going to do is we're going to alternate them. We're not going to light Revere TV on fire today. <laughs> um, maybe for another day that would be a little fun, but we'll today pretend. we're just going to pretend. And so what you see me doing is I'm going to create an invisible line straight down here that's about two feet. And I'm going to come over to that angle a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. And so you have two feet of working space 
And what that will do is once when we play with the greenery, it'll get you about four feet on your dining room table. Most dining room tables are six to eight feet. You don't want to take up the whole table. You want to stay within 12 inches to a foot thick, right? Because you don't want to be in someone's plate with your design as they're eating, but you do want to come down here a little bit lengthwise. So if you see what I did, I made that imaginary line and then I alternated the candles like this to kind of give you a little bit of texture. I also got some bud vases at the dollar store. Cute. And so I'm gonna fill those in right in those windows. And if you notice, I made sure that none of them were completely matching because I want you to have the visuals if you had these in your home, how would you get these to work and how would you coordinate them together? And so if you see, we're starting to fill in from here. So I love a few different flowers that I brought today. I brought some of my favorites. I know they're Jen's favorites too. Yeah. Um, you know why? Because I'm a good gal and fun. <laughs> she listens. I listen. <laughs> so this is a red tulip. These flowers last forever and ever and ever and ever. When you are putting flowers into the vase, you want to make sure that you always cut them at an angle. The uh, more severe the angle, the more the flower will drink. And I'm going to go ahead and put one right into there. I'm also going to save some of the greenery that you saw me cut this bulb off to because it, you can also use the greenery to make a nice, nice accent for that. Yep. I should have thought of step stool a little bit too, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can reach. You can reach. Okay. I got long arms. All right. You tell so, me what to do. So same what we're doing with the candles, we're going to do with the flowers too. So we're not going to cut them all the same length. We're not going to put them all in the same base or the same style. We're really going to have fun with those levels. The good thing about tulips is that they do stand up on their own. So you can go ahead and keep those tulips as long as you want. I'm going to give Jen a Gerber daisy. Yeah. In the store, you'll see that the Gerber daisies come with straws. Um, you can take those off or you can use them to help stand up on your own. You can also cut the straws so you can make it shorter. And if you look right here, I'm going to make this one very short. Again, cutting at an angle. And I'm actually going to cut it much shorter because what I want it to do is sit on the mouth of that base right there. Isn't that cute? Very cute. Want to do this one? Yes. All right. Come on over. All right. So I'm a little rusty, Jen. I haven't I, played with flowers in a couple years. Right? But yeah. <laughs> so Jen Same. and I used to prepare for Valentine's Day. We used to work oh, in a, when we were young, young, we used to work in a <laughs> flower store together as sales girls. Yes. And then later on, we uh, worked at a flower store in Revere. Yes. Uh, but it's been a little time for us, been right? A little, been a little while. Yes. Yeah. But I love it. You I do, do too. I, I do it. too. And I think that you can't have Galentines without flowers. I, any Valentines, can't have Galentines. Baked goods, but definitely yeah. not flowers. Definitely not. Um, so I got these flowers at a local super, supermarket. I happen to like Wegmans for supermarket flowers. Yeah. I think that they come packaged just as you want them. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll come with just a package of Gerber daisies or you can do the mix bunch. Yep. Uh, but they also have packages of greenery, which you don't see everybody do. Yeah. Um, and I actually really like greenery. I so, love greenery and that I feel like I? that's coming back. That's yes. huge. You know, one, it's a cost saver, but it's so simple and elegant. Yeah. Brings the outdoors in. I feel like it's you can really certainly exciting. just get away with greenery in a lot of instances. Mm -hmm. One flower that I'm playing with right now is baby's breath. This Jen hates baby's breath. Like there's <laughs> it like it smells. It's it doesn't smell it good. It stinks. But but it is a great cost saver. Look at that. Look how big you get for that look. And this one, uh, I it love it. Somebody thing. sprayed it with glitter, so I had to buy it at the store. <laughs> um, but yeah, Jen would argue that it is not her favorite. But it is but a great filler. That. Look, see how that fills it is in. Beautiful. Yes. One thing I'm gonna do down the bottom. And you can do this with uh, a tablecloth, a napkin, um, cheesecloth. Cheesecloth yeah. is what we see for a big one. Yep. And you kind of just weave it through as if it was um, a table runner. You could even use a table runner if you have one. Yeah. I'm going to do this with greenery. So I'm going to go ahead and put this through here. Um, I'm going to cut them at all different lengths. And what I'm doing is I'm just adding just a little bit more of aesthetic for... Can you grab that? Side? Yep. And so what you see starts to fill in from there. And it's going to really take your tablescape to the next level and create some length for you and some dimension. And as you see, all those colors are starting to co coordinate together because you're tying them together with this greenery, which I think Jen was right. I think greenery kind of finishes off your design. Yep, definitely. 
Uh, much to Jen's chagrin, I'm going to add in a couple more baby's <laughs> breath right here. I'm okay. I'm, You're it's okay growing it. You're on okay. me. It's yeah. growing on me. Look at that. Just like tulips. Tulips used to not be one of my favorites, but I love them now. I don't know. I guess your taste just kind of changes. You come to appreciate different things as you get older. What is your current favorite? Um, I really love Gerber daisies. Mm -hmm. I also really, an underrated flower that you always see at the grocery stores is Alstroemeria. I love that. They last forever. So if you ever want to like buy yourself flowers, you're just looking for something like really inexpensive. I feel like they just look good by themselves in a vase. They I did. can, yeah. I almost bought them. Yeah. But then I went for your Gerber daisies. Thinking but they're, they're, and they're my favorite. Mm -hmm. They are. Alstroemeria, what Jen's talking about, and I apologize for my horse uh, throat. <laughs> I'm just getting over a cold. I'm going to share that with Jen soon yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, we share um, everything. <laughs> <laughs> and so the Alstroemeria is actually, it's a lily. It's called the Peruvian lily. Mm -hmm. And um, so you see it, it is like the quintessential market basket flower. Yep. Uh, it lasts forever and ever and ever. Like yeah. You could go on for three weeks for it. Comes in all different shades, opens up so nicely, um, and it's just such a cost-effective flower for right. almost any occasion. Exactly. Yeah. All right, what do we think? I think it looks beautiful. So I have some accents. Ooh, Valentine accents. For my, for my Galentine. I love it. Let me clean and this these. Off. So these, these accents I also got at the dollar store. Um, fun thing, if you wait to very close to Valentine's and take a gamble, uh, it seems to be everything is 40 to 50% off. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So if you're not completely married to your designscape, you could really have fun with it. Yeah. And these are great. These are so Aren't cute so and reusable. Cute? I love it. These are cute. These like little yeah. felt hearts, right? Yeah. And so as you see, we're just still elongating down. We have some napkins, I'm so just, I'll put those and, right here so like you could do your plating when yeah. you're ready. All right. And one thing Jen and I used to get requests for all the time mm -hmm. around Valentine's Day uh, was fresh rose petals. Um, we would, everybody under the sun wanted fresh rose <laughs> petals for closer to Valentine's Day. These are silk. What I like about yep. silk ones is that real rose petals will stain your table. Yeah. Um, so Jen was really careful when she was playing with that red dye that she was putting into um, the cake. Mm -hmm. uh, red rose petals, the same thing. It's a natural red dye. So I went ahead and got some silk petals. And so we're just going to put them throughout. But again, just to add a little more fun to the yep. palette. More texture, more color. Look at Add that. so much interest. Here, I'll get down here. Yeah. Add some length. Yep. There we go. And I think, just for fun, because I'm staring at it on camera, I'm gonna cut that one down just a little bit, or else that'll bug We're me. perfectionists. Perfectionists, perfectionists. <laughs> she would do it too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what do we think? I love it. I All think right. it's such a great, um, great centerpiece. It gives some interest to the table. It allows you to decorate for the holidays, any holiday, really. Yep. I mean, you could do this for anything, Easter, yes. Christmas, and it's just, finishes the space. Mm -hmm. It makes it feel like a party when you're having people over to just, you know, yeah. decorate a little bit. And this yeah. is something that comes together really inexpensively and quickly. Yes. And yeah. you could even, uh, for like what Jen's saying, for Christmas or other holidays, you can separate these a little bit and then put your food in between them. So mm -hmm. you can actually make them, you know, the accents in between your, your food plating. So yeah. that's a cool idea too. I love it. Right. I think it's great. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Um, I want to frost the cake. Yes, okay. we're going to frost the cake next. <laughs> so I actually have, for magic of television, I have one that I already pre-made. So the one that we just mixed up is still in here. But I went ahead and made our frosting in advance. And I have a finished cooled cookie cake in here. I also have some decorations and a little cake board. So... Things that you can get really inexpensively if you don't have them around the house. You can use, obviously, a serving platter, but if you just want something inexpensive to serve it on, these cake boards are super cheap. You can get them at Michael's, you buy them on Amazon. I mean, you can get everything mm -hmm. on Amazon now. So I'm just going to use that because it makes it just a nice, clean... Dis and I love disposable, too. If yes. I don't have to wash a dish, I'm happy. <laughs> um, so this is completely cooled. You're going to let your cookie cool completely in your springform pan. You're going to unlatch it and see how nice that comes off. And I'm gonna just go ahead and slide this over here. 
And you never wanna cut on your pan either. So when you're cutting with a knife, you're gonna hurt all that nice nonstick coating. So you don't wanna do that. So anytime you can, remove it completely from your pan or don't cut in your cake pans. Then I went ahead and pre-mixed our frosting. So our cream cheese frosting is two thirds of a cup butter, two ounces of cream cheese. Both of them are really, really soft. Um, mix those up really, really well, cream them together. Then we're gonna go ahead and add in your vanilla and salt, mix it again. And then you're gonna add in about one and a half cups of powdered sugar. You can do about a half cup less, you can do a half cup more. Um, I know some people don't like that really extra sickening sweet frosting, but this is um, just right, I think, at one and a half cups. It gives you a really nice firm frosting too, so you can pipe it. So I know a lot of people don't have piping tips and piping bags around, but the bags, you really can get super cheap, Michaels or Amazon. Same thing for the piping tip. If you had just one tip in your house to decorate a cake or anything, it's called a 1M tip, it's a star tip. Um, I actually have one right here. So that is really <laughs> super easy to use. And I went ahead and filled the frosting in here and cream cheese already has a lot of liquid, so you don't have to add milk or anything else to your frosting. And I'm gonna pipe this on, give it like a nice border. And go all the way around. And this would be great for like, if someone doesn't like cake, do this for a birthday cake for someone who doesn't like cake or if you're just looking to do something different, you can play with the color of the frosting. You could add different color sprinkles. This would be great for Christmas. Just go all the way around. And then with this kind of a tip, you can also pipe little hearts on your cake if you want some extra frosting on there. And you're just gonna do one swoop to the left and one swoop to the right. And you're gonna make little hearts on your cake. And you could leave this plain like that or we can decorate with some fun sprinkles. And here I just have like a multicolor, and this goes great with uh, Carrie's tablescape with the pink and the yeah. red and the hearts, and everything is coordinating, which we love. We planned that. We planned it, yeah. It's like we don't even need to plan it, we just know. <laughs> We're just that in sync. And this looks great. Yeah, so see how quick that comes together? And you can make the cake in advance and make the frosting the same day. It doesn't have to be all at once. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, we're all busy. So gotta plan your things out. Um, so there we do go. You like cream cheese frosting better than I do. I do, yeah, cream I cheese do. frosting. Yeah. I mean, it goes on everything, mm -hmm. I think, but it's mm -hmm. so good. Um, and then one other thing that I will say, if you don't wanna pipe your frosting, one thing you could do is almost make it like a pizza. Yep. So dollop your frosting in the middle and spread it out, cover it with some sprinkles. You can buy that like gel um, food writing stuff at the grocery store and write mm -hmm. Happy Valentine's Day or Galentine's Day or Love You, whatever. So very easy, came out great, super cute, quick. Um, we could cut a piece. Let's do it. Let's do that. Oh. I love it. And we'll cut a couple of slices. All right, there we go. And this is perfect. Yeah, it's a perfect little bite. It's a great way to finish your dinner or brunch. And I think that it's really good. Yeah. If you love red velvet or anything kind of chocolate, this is even great because I'm not a huge chocolate fan. So this is a great like seriously in between. Yeah, I'm a vanilla really? person, so I don't do like super fudgy chocolatey stuff. I love things that um, that is so good. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so really there, good. Thank you. I'm not even telling you because we're on camera. Like it is delicious. It's, thank <laughs> you. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. So I think we make a great team. <laughs> Great team. That's why we've been together for 30 years. <laughs> Sorry, Pat. Sorry, Sorry yeah. Mr. Mayor. Right. Yeah. Sorry. My first true love. <laughs>
That's right. That's right. Same, same. So yeah. So I hope that you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. To you as well. I'm really happy not to be prepping flowers with you on it. I'm so I'm, sorry. I know. Same. I'm kind of. I'm not. I'm not upset. I think we're too old for it. that now. I think we're. Yeah. Is that possible? <laughs> we're not that old, but we're too old for that. Mm-hmm. So um, it's nice to finally get to enjoy Valentine's Day with you. Yes. Yes. And do something nice and calm mm-hmm. and enjoy something sweet. And yeah, we're good. Awesome. Yeah. To everybody, thank you for letting me crash on baking with the keeps or cooking with the keeps, but it's mainly, yes. I think it's, it's baking. Bake. It's baking with the keeps. Um, and to everybody, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you try this recipe because it is delicious. Yes, definitely. And it'll be posted. They'll post it on the, I think, website or Facebook page for Revere TV, and it'll be posted at the end of the show as well. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you try it. Let me know what you think. Have a great day and happy Valentine's Day. Thanks, guys. Bye.